Welcome back to B2B Growth. I'm Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. Today is another episode in our How to Podcast series. We have been uh, a little bit lack in adding some new content here. Uh, we've been doing some other things to answer some questions. Today, we're going to be talking about dispelling the myth that getting a big name, getting that one thought leader is really going to change your audience growth. Uh, I am joined today by our founder and CEO, James Carberry. James, how are you doing today, man? I am fantastic. And this is something I hear all the time, Logan. You were just talking to a customer of ours that, you know, had uh, that, that brought this up. It, it typically comes from PR. So if you're, if you're a marketer listening to this, um, it, th this question most often, especially in larger organizations, you end up having PR step into the podcast process. And they, I don't know, Logan, when they typically step in, is it, uh, is it usually kind of in the final hours right before you're about to launch? <laughs> That's yeah. definitely happened a time or two. Sometimes it's earlier on. It depends on that relationship between marketing and PR and, and the org structure and the relationship, all that sort of stuff. But we've definitely seen like, okay, marketing has the content plan and maybe even has identified some guests or just said, hey, we want to talk about these. And as long as someone fits this persona, then, it, you know, that's, that's going to fit in there. Whereas PR wants things to be usually a little bit more mapped out and, and want some bigger names typically uh, included in that plan of who you're going to have on the podcast for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we wanted to, we wanted to dispel some of these myths. If anything, uh, you know, you can send this episode to your PR folks and, and have them, uh, have them hear from us. I mean, we're, we're, uh, we've done this for a hundred plus companies. Uh, we've produced thousands of podcast episodes. We've got lots of data. We're seeing data on download numbers for all of our customer shows. Uh, so we're not just spouting kind of our personal opinion. We're, we're seeing that the, that the difference of having a big name uh, does not actually result in what you think it probably results in. And uh, a, a quick story for us, for, for those listening that are familiar with Gary Vee, which I don't know how you can be in marketing or in any sort of marketing role and not know who Gary Vee is. But he, if, if you don't, he owns a massive ad agency in New York City uh, and is probably the most well-known entrepreneur in the world today, I would say. Um, maybe that, that may be next slightly below Elon Musk. But regardless... Um, Gary, we had Gary V on B2B growth a few years ago. I think it was actually almost, it was just over three years ago from the day that we're recording this. And I got to interview him for a virtual summit that we were doing with some other partners and we repurposed the episode on B2B growth. We've also had Simon Sinek, the guy that did the Ted talk about start with why he wrote a book called start with why, um, and both of those episodes were two of our least downloaded episodes in B2B growth. And we've done over 1,600 episodes at this point. And when we look at download numbers for the Gary Vee episode and the Simon Sinek episode, you would think that those episodes would have a massive draw. But it, the reality is they didn't. And yeah. They, they were some of our, some of our lower downloaded episodes. Um, so I want to, I want to jam on why that is and kind of what, what Logan and I's thinking is around this, because um, man, there's, there's just a lot of opportunity in talking to practitioners and talking to folks that are actually doing the job of the people that you're trying to serve with your product or service. Um, and so Logan, what are, what, what are your initial thoughts on, on this idea? Yeah. And one piece of context I think I want to add is that like, we're not just picking on PR here. I had a conversation with a marketing leader the other day. Uh, there are 140 episodes into their podcast and they interview practitioners in the sales space um, in a few different vertical markets that they serve. And then also kind of some sales thought leaders, some, some authors and bigger names in the sales space. And we were talking, he was saying, hey, we need to get a more steady stream of that. You know, you guys have had Gary Vee and Simon Sinek on, on your podcast. And I, I shared the exact story uh, that you just, you just talked about. Now, you wrote about that interview with Gary Vee in, in your book in Content-Based Networking. It was an awesome experience. Uh, some good relationships came out of that scenario as well. But it didn't change the trajectory of our downloads and our reach on B2B growth. And I think that's the myth that a lot of people are buying into, both on the marketing and the PR side. 
I think the first thing you've got to think about is the value for that that big name and then also the value for the listener. So let's talk about the first one, the value for that big name. Um, now we had one customer where Gary B was on his podcast and he kind of went, he had his team go all in on promoting that episode, but he mentioned like, Hey, there's an opportunity here. I'm going to do something cool. It was, it was like, because it came out of the conversation that they ended up having, but think about Gary B for example, how many other podcasts he's on, on a regular basis, um, other shows, other appearances, and all of the content that his team is pushing out it's no fault on Gary, but there's no there's no incentive or there's no mechanism for them to heavily promote every everything that they do and every other media entity that they appear on. Um, and so that's the one side of it. And then we'll get into the listeners. Do you want to add something to that before we go to the next part, man? Yeah, I, I think I think you've got to be realistic. If if your show is getting two hundred downloads an episode, you you can't expect to get somebody that is accustomed to being able to reach thousands and thousands of people at a moment's notice. And so, thinking through the what value can I offer to the guest is really important. But what I what I really want to hammer hammer in on is that. You like I I wrote an email a while back. It it was called, and the subject line was "Stop Chasing Influencers." And we outlined this story of like, "Hey, we've interviewed some big names, and our downloads did not skyrocket." Uh, And a lot of that's because of how discoverability works within within podcast platforms. People are not. It's it's not like a news feed algorithm where stuff is is popping up in your in your feed that you're not subscribed to. You subscribe to a show because you saw a promotion happen on social, or you heard somebody mention that they had a podcast on another podcast that you listened to, or a friend of yours said, "Hey, you got to check out this podcast." And and so you've got to think about how are people finding your show and. If, you, if your show is hyper relevant to a very specific persona, people are likely going to talk about that show. So you should spend way more time thinking about how you're branding and positioning your show than you should think about trying to get massive names on your show. Because, I mean, spoiler alert, every, every big show, like every show tries to go after these influencers and it kind of dilutes the influencer's message. When I, like, I know when a particular author just released a book because they're on 74 different podcasts, that doesn't make your show stand out and it doesn't make your show unique that you're one of the 74 bazillion podcasts that this author went and did an interview for. Um, it, It might be good content. It might be relevant to your audience. It might not be, but I just, I just, from my perspective, uh, and from the experience that we've seen, we have not seen an increased number of downloads by having these these big names. Yeah. Uh, now, to, you you made a point offline, Logan, of you know if you do have a big name, we're not saying don't interview anybody big on your show, mm-hmm. but that should yeah, not. Absolutely. I don't think that should be the focus of it. Like for example, there was a there was a friend of mine whose podcast I I hadn't listened to in a while, and he interviewed a big name. Uh, recently and posted about it on LinkedIn. I saw it in my feed and I was like, oh, that that sounds interesting. I'll go and check out that episode. And I ended up going and downloading a few other episodes while I was there. So in that case, he did use the big name that he had on his show as the tip of the spear to re-engage me, who is a former listener, to go in, and listen to more of his episodes. So it can work, but it does not mean it does not mean that every episode of your show needs to be this, you know, massive name. One, it's not sustainable. And two, it's just not as effective as you think it is. Yeah. There's two things I want to touch on there. One, it's not sustainable, like, like you just said. Um, But also if you're going to do it, set your expectations um, and set yourself up for success. So you talked about just like, think about the daily routine and, and how consumption happens in podcasting. When I'm scrolling through a feed, of, you know, hey, here's my up next downloaded episodes. I got one from John Barrows. I got one from the Sales Engagement Podcast. I got one from Donald Miller, uh, Building a Story Brand. I'm looking at the headlines. I'm not scrolling through that. Now, maybe I'm I'm the minority, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that I, I don't think that I am. People are looking for the headline. Um, I pulled our, 
our audience on LinkedIn a while back, how many people read show notes to like decide, are they going to consume the episode? It was a very small portion. Most people are going into show notes um, to maybe follow up with the guest or find a resource that was mentioned, something like that. So if you are going to have a big name on, don't think that, hey, that big name now shows up in my podcast feed and the downloads are going to skyrocket because it doesn't really change anything. Someone's either going to click on that or not. They, they might share it. What you need to do, though, is connect that to social and talk about what is the content that they shared. If I interviewed this author and I asked them a different question, which again goes to interview prep and is a different conversation, uh, how are you going to draw some different sort of content perspective or story out of that big name, that author, that thought leader or influencer? And then how is your team going to throw extra promotion behind that episode to make it intriguing for that person who's maybe not engaged or doesn't know about your show and isn't subscribed? Um, and also, how can you make it really easy for that, that guest to promote their show? Can you create some content for them to be able to easily share some, some graphics? Can you, you know, send two or three follow-up emails to multiple people on their team um, with links to make it very easy for them to share? Don't assume practitioner or thought leader that your guest is going to share their episode. Mm -hmm. it, we're all human. We take the path of le the path of least resistance. So make it easy. Yeah. Um, the other thing, you know, we talked about, okay, value for you as the podcaster, value for the guest. The other thing I think we got to touch on here is the value for the listener. And this is a little bit of a tangent, a little bit of a rabbit trail, but this story kind of came to mind as you and I were talking about the subject. I was uh, listening to, I forget his name, uh, David, he, he plays the character Hopper on Stranger Things. Now, unless your head's been under a rock, you probably know what Stranger Things is. If you haven't watched it, you should. Anyway, great show. Uh, Hopper, he's a he's a cop. Uh, he's got some drinking problems. He's a little rough around the edges in small town in it, Iowa. No, it's Indiana, right? In Stranger yeah. Things. Anyway, small town cop. And he was doing this interview talking about the very first scene with him uh, on Stranger Things. He's shirt off in his trailer, small town in Indiana. And he was like, man, I was prepping for this. And I was like, I got to get ripped. I can't have my first scene, have this great six pack and not, and not have this great six pack. And then he thought, well, that's not really relatable, right? It, that's part of what Stranger Things is like the nostalgia um, and the relatability of the characters in small town America that's, that's drawing people in and hooking them. Now the aliens and all sorts of other stuff is, is cool too. But um, his point there that I think is relevant to this conversation is, you know, you were talking about some podcasts that you've listened to that are all interviewing these massive successes and they're not as relatable for you when you're listening to other podcasts, uh, other podcasts where they're interviewing CEOs and founders of companies that are at our stage where you can learn more from things that are fresh in their mind what they're going through, just like you would with, you know, an agency peer group or a mastermind that you're a part of. Mm -hmm. um, and so the relatability factor, I think, is important to think about as well. I, I get feedback on our show all the time because we're often interviewing VPs of marketing who are in the trenches at growing companies, some established and a lot of brands you've never heard of. And I hear listeners say, you know, they're they get a ton of value from those episodes. So whether it's a, a thought leader or a practitioner, and you know, we all know there's gray area in between. It's not like they come with labels on their hats, but <laughs> it's about the content and it's about what are you pulling out? How are you helping them promote? And how are you making the content actionable for your listeners? That's going to carry the day. Yeah. When the, when the content is actionable, that's what I found the difference between you know, the authors and thought leaders that write books. And this is coming from a guy who's written a book. Like I, I've, <laughs> I, I, I want to be on podcasts talking about the message from the book because I want to, I want to promote the book. I think, I think the ideas in the book are a game changer. And, and I would hope that people want to have me on their show, but they should not only be focused on people that have written books. There are practitioners that have incredible, thoughtful ideas and tactics and strategies that they've deployed. And we're talking specifically about business podcasts here. That's the, all the pod for context. All of our hundred plus podcasts 
our business podcast. We're working specifically with B2B companies in a variety of industries. And th- if, if you can, if, if you can pull out practical, tangible, actionable content from your guest, regardless of whether they're a thought leader and they wrote a book on it, or they just stumbled on this experiment with their team three weeks ago, and they saw incredible results from doing something crazy with their chat bot or uh, figuring out they just went through a repositioning uh, of their of their brand and they've figured out how to uh, where where all within their marketing messaging that they needed to inject this new kind of repositioning or brand statement like th- that content is going to be far more helpful than something Gary Vee could tell you that he said you know, a million times before on his YouTube channel and all the other places where people consume Gary V. So don't discount the value that a practitioner can add to your listener. Uh, be, we've just seen it over and over and over again that uh, um, that it, there's there's tremendous value to be had in learning from your peers and people are hungry for that. They want to they want to learn from people that are in the trenches and a lot of people honestly kind of disrespect the thought leaders and authors because they get so much play and they get so they get lifted on these pedestals. I hear people all the time that are, that, that say things like, you know, I'd, I'd rather, I, I'd rather not hear from a sales trainer that hasn't sold anything in 30 years. I'd rather much, I'd, I'd rather actually hear from someone who sold something in the last decade. Now that's in a sales context, but I, I've heard similar things of like, you know, I would much rather hear from somebody who's actually in the trenches and doing this work than somebody who just wrote a book about it based on something that they did, you know, 14 years ago. And, yeah. and that's, that's real. I mean, that, that's, that's the sentiment that I get from a lot of the people that we talk to that listen to the show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the, the greatest episodes that like drew me into B2B growth as a listener was one you did with our boy G, Gaetano, when he was at Sales Hacker, talked about the user-generated content strategy, the results that it drove for them from an SEO perspective, and it broke broke it down, right? And, you, and he walked through, this is what we did here, this is what we stopped doing. And you and I recorded an episode about Uh, I think about 15 audience growth strategies. And one of the things we were talking about is people are looking for things to do and to start doing and to stop doing. And I have a lot of guests on B2B growth that, hey, sometimes we let them kind of come to us with their area of expertise or passion right now. What do you want to talk about? And then we kind of coach them through what's going to make a good episode. And I get a lot of well, let's talk about being more human in your marketing or the power of digital. It's way too high level. And what I tell guests is, you know, it may, it may seem like, oh, that's going to be valuable because it's like up here, 30,000 foot view. And when I say like, what's, what's the tweak, three tweaks you made to all your landing pages in the last 30 days, they're like, well, that's, that's really in the weeds. That's the nitty gritty. I'm like, in the weeds is where people get value. It, it, it feels counterintuitive to a lot of people, but I can tell you, I've been hosting a daily show for the last two years almost now, and I've heard a lot of people um, as guests on the show, and the more granular they get and the more actionable they have something to share, the more we get feedback and the more, you know, when I post that content on LinkedIn, uh, that I get more engagement as opposed to the, the good reminders. And so... Uh, I think that points to the value that practitioners can bring to your show, but also the way you as a host can better deliver value to your listeners, no matter who you're interviewing. That we're not saying you can't get uh, tactical stuff. I've gotten tactical stuff from Gary V, but uh, don't just expect like, hey, the big name's coming and they're going to say they're going to say stuff and downloads are going to skyrocket. Yeah. And the, the the other thing, yeah, don't don't expect the big name to come and bring their audience with them. That's not how it works in podcasting. That may be how it works in other platforms. And if you maybe if you do a collaboration on Instagram or a, maybe Twitter, I, I don't know how the algorithms for all of those work. But but within podcasting, Gary V's audience doesn't come with him to our feed. It doesn't. We don't. We don't. Ex, we, it's very hard to pull people that subscribe to Gary V's podcast and bring them over to our podcast unless we actually get onto his show and talk and are able to talk about what we do and and if you listen to any of Gary V's or any of these big names like they they don't do that that's not something 
it's it's not really an achievable goal for you to go after. So instead, get more serious about honing in on who is the specific persona that our content is going to add enormous value to. And then let's let's not only try to add value to them as a listener, but let's go after their peers and get their peers to be a guest on our show so that our listener can hear from their peers and people that are in the trenches with them. Those folks are a lot easier to get on your show. The content, honestly, I think is equally as good. That's not to downplay or to discount the value of the content from the big names, but it's going to allow you to have a much more consistent show with great quality content. You just have to stop thinking that influencers are the only people with good content to share. Yeah, absolutely. And they're not the only path to audience growth. Um, we'll, we'll link in this epi- episode to uh, a blog post that, that we've been working on to just get all of the things out of our uh, collective brain here at Sweetfish on the different things we've tried, we've seen work uh, when it comes to audience growth. So we'll link to that in the show notes. Um, if you're not if you're not used to seeing us uh, on camera, something new we're doing is uh, we've recently launched the B2B Growth YouTube channel. So you can still hear us every single day here on B2B Growth in whatever podcast app you're used to listening. Uh, But we'll also link to the YouTube channel if you want to see our faces, uh, see us get a little bit riled up. James and I get a little bit passionate about dispelling some of these common myths when it comes to podcasting. So we got a little bit fired up today, I think, at at least for me. Um, James, if anybody listening to this is not yet connected with you, what's the best way, man? So uh, LinkedIn is really the best place for folks to connect with me. Uh, James Carberry, C-A-R-B-A-R-Y. Email is james at sweetfishmedia.com. Would love to connect with anybody and everybody. Yep, same for me. Just look me up on LinkedIn. Last name is L-Y-L-E-S. Uh, or shoot me an email, logan at sweetfishmedia.com and uh, connect with us on LinkedIn. We're trying to share as much content there as well as the podcast and the new YouTube channel. As always, however you find this content, we hope it's useful. And thank you so much for listening. <laughs>